Hello, hello packers, hello, hello reaper people, hello packer people, hello bibidi babidi boobidi boo. My camera is completely bonks because I forgot to bibid it. Uh, let me see if I did I don't know. Hello, how you doing? Good day everyone, greetings, well met. Hello, hello Jedi, hello Quindley, how you doing you sexy people, what's up? We are back, we are back with our streams. I missed two weeks. Last week I missed it because I was on vacation. And the week prior to that I missed it because I was uh, sick. But now I'm here. Ready to paint puppets with you guys. So the plan is to complete this lady fairly quickly and uh, move on to something else. I, I remember having a troll model that looked really cool and I wanted to work on it. Hello, Marika. So we are gonna do just that, but first we gotta finish this lady here. I don't remember at all what colors I used, nor does it matter because I can just uh, I can just mix my own paints. I I have some paints here on the palette. Might might as well use these. How is everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well. I did miss my Reaper streams, you know, they, they were, they are relaxing to me, painting uh, in a more carefree kind of way, without thinking too much about quality or, uh, you know, stuff like that. I, I just get to enjoy painting in a bit more of a free kind of way. So yeah, I do want to finish these Lisette. And then move on to, to something else. Oh yeah, you can. For sure, Marika. Trying to get the, the paint to remix a bit. paint is behaving badly I don't like it let me let me just quickly add a bit of green as I work on the new model though I'm gonna have to change the palette I think so after after I prime it we can uh, we can change the palette So I'm gonna get the clothing done. And then think about whatever else I wanna finish, but there's not too much left to do on this on the lady here. Hello, Asgard. How you doing? For a month? What? What? 
Is this an... Is this a... Optimist way of saying you've been fired? Who goes on vacation for a month? I see, and they let you... okay. Here in Italy it's very difficult to save up vacations in a sense that uh, companies just close down in the summer. <clears throat> like during, during summer periods, like this one, the company will just close down for two weeks and uh, whether you like it or not, you're on vacation. You don't get to save up very easily. Are you going somewhere since you have such a long vacation? Enjoy your visit in Spain, dude. Okay, just trying to get myself some sort of gradient out of these greens here. I would like to go to Spain. Not as a holiday, but to be able to spend some time with the painters there. The, the best painters are in Spain. of the summer I I can barely paint myself to be honest in a sense that the weather here has been so hot It's difficult to get the consistency to be right for <clears throat> more than a few seconds.
Don't they cost the same? That's that's exactly how much they cost here in Italy, I mean. Actually, I think I paid them like 10 cents less. the people who got the ship Yeah, this is the kind of weather that makes you feel like you forgot how to paint. Basically. Because, <laughs> like, nothing really works out. And you're like, man, have I forgotten how to paint minis? Is that what happened to me? That's what she said. Ooh, the glow in the dark. I didn't know there was a glow in the dark one. going crowned. How heavy is the box?
Oh, you 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 added the shading. I think it, it is working out, and I also think it's your best attempt yet. That's good. <laughs> 30 pound? Oh, Jesus Christ. Just wanna just wanna get this dress sorted out once in the full No, I need uh I need the yellow. You're not the shading yet, okay. Alright, that's good. Hello Robbie. I could I could lift 30 kilograms for a flight of stair, but then I would probably need to rest for a couple of days. I became such a bitch over over the years, like it's incredible how weak. But you know, I might I might start to get buff again after uh, because it looks like I'm going to have to go to physiotherapy for my back. So maybe... Maybe... I might get be in shape again. The Space Marine uh, it was a bit of a tragic day for me today. In a sense that the lighting I have isn't working out at all. I can't really see the model well and uh, it is bothering me more than I care to admit but it is really making painting not enjoyable for me right now because uh, it, it, it just feels wrong in a way so I'm gonna be spending the day tomorrow trying to figure out a way to make my light work because it's really really bothering me Trying to add some subtlety, but I think we are in a good spot here. Okay, let's get the, the body of the blade painted. We can do a gold, why not? Might as well.
Okay. Hello, Robert. How you doing? Yeah, it's so weird to paint under this heat. I cannot wait for winter to arrive. Or at least, I wish I had air conditioning, you yeah. know? That would be nice too. Adding a bit more of a mid tone there. Oh, we should be good. I just want it in my room. I don't care about the rest of the house. I changed the setup. You're more in front of the cam. Uh, you mean the face cam? Yeah, I had to move uh, things a little bit while, when I changed the lights, but I think my face, cam, my face cam moved on its own earlier today. Okay. 
Okay, just I just want to quickly get the mini done so we can move on to another one because this one I have forgotten what I did on. Okay, just that's good. Uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. Let's do the stuff. We can do the stuff in a brown. Let's let that dry. In the meantime, we can maybe base coat the leather here. We can do also in a brown. And while we're here, might as well do the boots in a brown. dark green because why not okay. hello mg thank you for summer how you doing hello gala what's up how you doing One hour and a half to go. Oh, okay, it's fine. We're almost there.
Da kann man auch wieder so. That's good. Have you been able um, to catch up with all the work you had to do over the last week, Gallo? Okay, I honestly think we can call it done. Mostly, mostly because the smaller detail would take me a long time to get done and uh, I think it's more fun if we instead move on to another mini. We have we have done a lot of work on that already last week. Also, like, it's good for me to start another model rather than pick up something from two weeks ago. Let me just um, find the minis that I have from because uh, I have like a box here somewhere around here. Page seven. Let's see. This guy, Elanter, the Lost Prince. Hello, Arco. This guy looks cool. It's a Bone USA dude. So it's one of the newer minis. And this guy looks pretty nice. Uh, a, a, an elf. A cool, sexy little elfy boy. Very good mini. Look how cool it is. Like, even unpainted. Unprimed and unpainted. It looks really nice. So, this guy is gonna work out. We can do some stippling, maybe. We can, uh, because he has a lot of cloth, so we can uh, we can do some texturing on the cloth. I do like how the cloth has been sculpted on him. Very, very good sculpt on the cloth. So we can have fun painting some uh, some BBD boy. I think I'm gonna go for a white and blue color scheme. Yes, Malika. We can go for a white and blue color scheme as a nod to. Uh, Warhammer Fantasy Elves, not the, not the current Warhammer, the, the good Warhammer. Yeah. Yeah, he looks cool. Let me see that face. What a sexy boy. Look at him. He's so sexy, man. All right, gonna prime him. And uh, so I'm gonna go be right back because I gotta prime the dude and also get myself a new piece of paper. So I'll be back in two minutes. And af as we wait for the primer to dry, I can have my usual cigarettes, so we're not really wasting any time. And then after, we can work on it. I do like this model. He's, he's cool. He's cool. I like him. Yeah, this one's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Uh, let me catch my primer.
and I'm gonna go grab a piece of paper and a bottle. Back. Hello, hello, Zoxet. Thank you for the sub, dude. How you doing? There we go. All right. So the primer is drying. I'm gonna hide my hideous, hideous appearance, and have a cigarette while uh, we wait for it to dry. And uh, yeah, you can, you can use uh, all the sprues. It's a bit of a complex method, but um, if you if you find yourself having to uh, gap fill a lot, plastic minis, you can create a gap filler using the sprues of minis by using Tamiya glue. Like you, you get a pot of Tamiya glue like this. If you get a pot of Tamiya glue like this and uh, you put not not too much but a, a bit of sprue pieces inside you can create a goo that is great for gap filling on plastic minis Go. or you can use sprues for basic material like you can you can carve them into rocks or stuff like that what i wish they did was to have like a recycling system like, I mean, Reaper does not use sprues much, so most of the plastic you get is on the Mini itself. So you're gonna paint it and that's it. But like, uh, companies like Games Workshop, you end up with a lot of unused plastic. And I would like for them to do something in their stores, like a recycling bin or something that... Like, even something positive in a sense that, I don't know, if you bring enough uh, pounds of sprues to recycle you get like a discount code or something so they encourage people to bring their sprues there so they do the recycling and i don't know that'll be cool because like this this hobby it's a very impactful hobby on the on the on the environment like it's not i mean there, there's wars out there but it's it, it's not zero impact we we do have a lot of impact in our hobby between the kolinsky sables that we you know get from animals and the plastic and all of that yeah exactly it does not work with bones
I used to make things for walls and spikes and things. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff you can do with spruce. To be fair, I have never done anything with them. I have a, I have a box which is possibly weight like five kilograms of just spruce. No, there, sitting there. I, one thing I am really lacking is creativity in bathing. Like, there's people out there who see something and they're like, oh, this would be great for bathing because I could do this and that on it. I I don't have that kind of inventiveness. When I, when I see an object, I see the object. I don't see the, what I could do with it. But there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of imagination when it comes to stuff they see outside or sprues or broken clocks and stuff like that. Alright, so this guy, I want to do a blue cloak and uh, a white, a yellowish beige white tabar, uh, body bar more. Sorry, body BBD. The, the body. The cloth. That one. So let's do that. And then we can give him like a golden crown and uh, a little bow and stuff. Very cool mini. I love the sculpt on the cloth. It's a very realistic looking cloth. I have such a gripe with cloth. You guys have no idea how much of a bitch I am when it comes to, to cloth on miniatures. It's so difficult to find a mini that has a believable looking cloth on itself. They always have, have a shape and a movement that is unrealistic. This one has a very, very nice cloth. It's gonna be fun to work on this dude. All right, so we're gonna be, yeah, I'm just gonna be base coating stuff as I see it, in a sense that, uh, yeah, let's just, uh, let's do, let's start from all the base coats, so I can also give myself a bit of an idea of what I want to go with it. So this is gonna be our cloth base coat, a bit of a parchment-like color. Hello, Azimara. So we got that one for the cloth. Uh, I will need a blue of some sort. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Let's use a monarch purple, which is not a blue. It's a it's a purple, but I can use it as a shadow. Mixing it with a blue, we can give the blue a bit of a reg regal looking color by shading it into purple. So let's do this as a base coat, and that's. Those are the two main details, really. And then we have the, the hairs, but those are going to be blonde, I reckon. This spear is going to be brown. And the other details are like irrelevant. What we need to base coat now is the cloth, because it's the biggest area. So these two colors are going to be enough for us. And then we can build up into lighter paints. All right, let's get cracking. We have about an hour and 20 minutes. So we should be able to do some good work here. Um, let me find a brush that isn't dead. I'm gonna eventually have to get some of the brushes I have, the new brushes and use those instead because I am, I'm using dead brushes a bit too long, but for now.
let's quickly base coat this guy. So I'm starting with the... I keep the paint thin when I base coat stuff. I don't keep it, uh, I don't, I don't uh, go too thick. Mostly for a matter of uh, smoothness. So let's go with this. Uh, I actually want him to have white gloves too. I don't want to have skin tone there, I want to have gloves. No, they look like gloves too. So, yeah. Base coating is one of the things I dislike doing the most. Not because it is boring to just paint a puppet, but because you have to be so careful when you do it. So like, it, it feels like an insignificant step, yet it is probably the most important step in the whole process of painting a mini. So you have to be so careful in doing it, and yet it's so boring. What happened to it, Albe? Hello, Joe. Good day, sir. How are you doing?
Okay, this is good enough because I'm gonna be using a higher coverage paint later, so it's fine. So let's do the base coat on the cape next. Just placing the paint and extending it. This color is so beautiful. Like this monarch purple from uh, Reaper is so good. I love this color. This is probably one of my favorite paints ever. Such a nice color, dude. Okay, let's let that dry. In the meantime, we can start building up some light onto our cloth. It's so good, man. Like, it's so good. I love Monarch Purple. It's so good. It's one of the best purples out there, I think. Like, if you need a saturated, dark purple, it looks so good. So this brush is dead because it's loading too much paint in itself. So let's let's move to this one instead. Okay, just looking for coverage as always. I do plan on texturing this cloth a little bit, but for now I'm just sketching some of the colors. The paint just isn't drying though because of the humidity in the air. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> I cannot wait for this summer to be over and hopefully, hopefully move out next year so I don't have to deal with another summer like this ever again. The first thing I'm doing the instant I move in with my girlfriend is getting myself um, air conditioning unit.
What color is that yellow? It's just a beige. It's just a beige. Neither of them is a yellow, really. They are uh, an ochre and a, and a beige. Added to each other. I am looking forward to San Savino, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna win anything, but I do look forward to meeting people. said we're not looking to blend anything just yet nor to create any texture the plan is to just keep going lighter and lighter and lighter because I needed to make this cloth look sort of white I don't want it to be white white but I want it to be like a, a light beige white I don't think it's possible to throw shades at Reaper, considering how incredible the customer support is. So now we have two very strong colors. We have the, the darker ochre and this whitish beige. And the objective would be to make them feel like they're blending into each other a bit. And the best thing to do here, I mean, besides just layering to blend, is to texture. So I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna texture this cloth so it looks like uh, it is uh, it is a material, like a soft, uh, a soft material. 
Of course, this first texture I'm doing is gonna look absolutely horrid as we add more on top and also glaze down a few things. It's gonna look better and better. Stippling is a very simple technique. At least it looks like it's simple. It's a bit it's it's a bit it's very actually very hard to understand and master because there's a lot of intricacies to it. But when you do understand it and you do it consistently, it is such a nice way to get stuff done quickly. So it is very important that I don't overdo this because as I drag these dots down, I am also dragging the light down. In a second you will see something really cool though. I mean, I don't know how cool it's gonna look. Uh, to you at least, but to me it's gonna look really cool. Because you can see that I created two layers, right? One with a... One with a... Ochre and the other one with a beige. And now I am dotting the beige all over the ochre. Not exactly all over, but... On the separation between the two, I'm, I'm having quite a lot of dots there. But soon, I'm going to glaze over all of this to turn it down. And that's going to allow me to create several gradients that I didn't have to paint, really, because the glaze is going to do it for me. Hello, mistress. How you doing, baby? <laughs> Lol, <Lock>, really. <laughs> I envy you guys, not only because you have the Bone File Kickstarter, but mostly because you own houses which have space for it. Because, like, if I... Like, if Reaper were to be nice to me, like, if they wanted to surprise me and I gotten, I had gotten the, the Bone File Kickstarter, I would be screaming because I wouldn't know where to put it. Like, I don't have the space in the house for a box that big. All right, let's glaze down. <laughs> no.
That sucks, Ghost. I was leap at the meeting. Uh, she was here a second ago. You can see that. Let me see if you can zoom in. You can see that we're getting, we're starting to get a texture here. I got it from Amazon, uh, man. man, man Manaqua. I got it from Amazon. It's gonna cost you around uh, 20 bucks. Yeah, it's black because I sprayed it black. But it used to be white when I got it. And uh, it is helpful because it allows me to uh, not strain my eyes as much over long painting sessions. Because like when you're painting on your own and you're like squinting like a little Clint Eastwood wannabe for six hours, you're gonna get a headache. With these glasses, you don't have to squint as much. So you, you can see the model straight up. Did you like it, mistress? Are you turned on? I do a great Clint Eastwood impression. You feel lucky, punk? That's what I'm asking. It's also like it, it doubles up as a Trump impression. By the way, now that I think about it, I am very good at painting, very intelligent. I'm stippling. See, like the, the, the face works for both. Anyway, uh, that's it. Let's mini let's make mini painting great again. <clears throat> that's how that's that's how he does them though. No, he does them like this. Like right, he does them like this. This is how Italians do it. He does it like he does like 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 this, right? <laughs> it's 
sorry. I admit, the intention was not political, though. It was just... Anyway, for comedic... Anyway. So, Stippling. Stippling. Uh, we are uh, applying uh, several different uh, BBDs. And glazing them down to change their color a little bit as we do them. It is... Uh, A very interesting I think. No stippling. Stippling. Don't spank me, Quindley. I've been a good boy. Okay, let's glaze it down one more time. Try to add some light. See what happens. <laughs> Thank you, Varla. No, actually, not even when I sleep, mistress. I I hit Marika in my sleep the the other night. I screamed at her and then I hit her. I didn't really hit her. I'm sorry, like, I, I just clenched there really hard. I was sleeping, by the way. It's not my fault. I'm not legally accountable. But seriously, like, I, I, I don't know why, like, I, she said I started screaming and then I held there really strongly. Are you a cat, Quindley? Man, two covers on one bed are amazing. In the mountains, me and Marika had them. Everyone had their own. Uh, we all, we both had our own covers, and it's so good. Whenever we sleep in a one cover bed, we all are, are always fighting for, for the covers.
Also, since I stayed at the hotel, I no longer use bed sheets, even in my own bed. I just have like, uh, how do you call it in English? Piumone. Like in the winter, I just have like a, a, a BBD I put on top of myself, but it's not connected to the bed. It's a separate thing. Comforter. Yeah, I don't... Yes. Yes. Because, like, I used to sleep on a, in, a, in a bed with, like, 200 sheets tucked under the mattress. But since I move a lot while I sleep, every morning it was a mess. Now with that thing, with, with just a flying comforter and nothing tucked into the bed, I can just wake up, throw the thing on the bed and I'm done. I don't even have to make the bed really anymore. So good. No, mistress. I mean, there are the sheets on the mattress, the mattress, there is the mattress cover, and then I have the flying comforter and nothing else. But the, the, the mattress cover, yes, we, you, you change that and all that. But I no longer have like a million sheets on top of me while I sleep. Yes, I, I do have that, yes. Hello, eight. Thank you. Ah, because of the mess behind me? <laughs> no, that's how my room looks like normally. Unfortunately, my bedroom is very small and it is also a studio because I work in it and it is also a warehouse for all the minis that I will have to paint for commissions and stuff. So... You know when you were a kid and you made like a fort out of boxes? I am I'm doing that without actually wanting to. But yes, I'm in a box fort. Fort box. Box fort.
Okay. I don't mind how this is looking so far. It looks like a beacon of light because of the lack of colors around it, but uh, I think I think I think it's good. So let's get some buru on uh, our dude. I do not. Although I wish I did, but I don't, unfortunately. Okay, so we have... We're going for a, a regal looking blue. Very intense blue. The texturing back here will be slightly different though. Uh, I'm not gonna be using the brush as much. I mean, I will be using it, but not as much. I will be using a sponge instead. All right, let's bring up the light just a little bit. I don't know if I should texture this or if I should uh, make it look like a satin. What do you guys think? Do you want to, do you want the cape to be textured like the front, or would you like it to to look a bit more uh, satin, more shiny? Strange things to your screen. What do you mean?
Yeah. That's very weird. Just working on creating a gradient right now. Uh, the allied color isn't quite fully covering, but that's that's actually a good thing because I first need to build up a mid tone. So I'm just uh, layering very carefully. It's just about overlapping the layers, really. I'm not exactly looking for a blend as I paint this color in. I'm just looking to overlap over the colors. Way too kind, Robbie. Okay, let's 
relight up. I need advice on how to use a wall palette. My parchment either gets too wet to cause the paint to run like water, or it curls up on itself. Well, when it curls up on itself, all you gotta do is just re 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 replace it, and it's gonna stick. After you place the paper on the on the um, on the sponge, it always curls up. It, it's natural. Also, I'm not sure what paper you're using, but uh, the, the suggested kind of paper would be non-waxed parchment paper. I have a video on YouTube uh, on um, making web palettes, if you want to check it out. All the, all the knowledge I have about web palettes is there. So maybe it can help you, maybe not. I don't know, but all I know about web palettes is there. I don't have an opinion on that paper because I never used it. We don't uh, here in Italy. We don't have Reynolds. Yes, exactly that. The 
The best reason to buy a company made wet palette would be to be able to have like a container that is good. Because it's difficult to find a container that is big enough and also short so that you don't bump into it when you go to load the brush. That's what makes a company made wet palettes better than a homemade one, really. But that's it in a sense that making your own wet palette is not very difficult and uh, it's not that much of a big deal. That said, like Masterson wet palette, which is the one I use, is gonna cost you 10, 10 bucks, so it's not that incredible of an expense. And it is a good one, wet palette. So I'm not looking to blend in a sense that my objective here is not to create smoothness between the two layers. What I'm doing is just try to add information and uh, the more information I add through, through the brush stroke and the colors by applying different colors uh, will give me a blend regardless of my effort in blending. Of course, I could sit here and glaze and layer for a long time to get like the perfect blend. But I don't particularly care. I would rather have it a bit more uh, open-ended in a way. So it looks more like a, a material. That's also why I'm doing the brush strokes like this. As you noticed, I've, I've been doing them horizontally pretty much the whole time. Okay. Need to not lose track of my original blue though.
let's make some smaller highlights. Yeah, it's a good color, I like it. I need to play around a bit more with the contrast, but... I can't really perceive the contrast due to the lighting I have right now. Everything gets washed out by the lights. I think I can go into a bit more of an icy blue though. Again, if I want this to, to feel a bit satiny, maybe I don't want it to be like a full satin cloak because it would be maybe too much, but I can, I, I can have it like a bit satiny. Not that it matters too much how satin it is because it's in the back. So it's not gonna clash too much with the front of the model, but I just need a bit more. Mm. It's all about it's all about making the contrast good. I could have kept the cloak a lot darker in the shadows, and that would have made my blue colors feel like mid tones, and that way I could have made it look like a matte blue cloak. By instead pushing light, I am making it look more like a satin cloak. So it is all about high contrast. It depends on which side of the of the value scale you want to have it to to create an illusion of material, right? You can have contrast in the darkness and have a more matte finish. Or you can have contrast in the light and you can have a more satin finish in the way stuff looks like. So here I'm gonna keep the bottom of the cloak pretty much as it is. And instead work on these upper part a bit more.
Okay, so that's all right. Let's see if we can get a super dark purple. Nice water. To help us a bit with the contrast. slightly lower the lights here. I don't need all of this white in there. Too bad. Wouldn't have much time left, so I'm gonna be spending a few minutes working on the on the front just to improve the stippling. I can, I can, I can, can I, I don't know, I mean, I'm gonna glaze it, but, I can probably darken a little bit the cloth, but it's something maybe worth thinking another time, because if I make a mess, I'm gonna have to fix it anyway. Okay, let's just keep building up gradients. For example, up here. I don't want the jump to be so stark from light to shadow because the volume doesn't justify it.
Okay. Okay, I don't mind how this cloth is looking on the back. Here on the top is going to be a little bit more difficult to make it look nice because of all the folds, but I think the best option I have is to just ignore the folds, really. I mean, not really ignore them, but uh, I don't need as much contrast. Like, actually, the, the, the issue I am currently having with this main job is that I have too much contrast happening. I know it's not a big deal because it's gonna lower as I paint the other details. Because right now I'm working with very bright colors, and uh, the black of the details around it is making me feel like everything is a bit cartoony, in a way. Because there's too much contrast. It's, it's, it's fake looking. But I reckon that as I paint the face, the, the weapons and everything, it's gonna quiet down a bit. Yeah, I don't need as much con that I mean more contrast here. It's just a matter of uh, <clears throat> painting the remaining stuff. This is a very fun mini though. If you wanna practice uh, cloth, this is a great mini to do so. The sculpt is absolutely great.
No, I actually stippled all of it. But since the upper part is... Uh, the upper part has less contrast in it, you notice it less. At a first glance. Okay, I think we're good for now. I might want to freehand something on the on the thing, like a phoenix or something. I don't know. We're gonna come out, come up with it next week, I guess. Because like I feel like this area here is a bit too barren. So maybe I don't know if I freehanded uh, something on it. But like I have to keep in mind that this is a fold, which means that whatever I freehand is gonna have to be interrupted because the actual drawing would be in the shadow here. So I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Maybe just something on the folds here, like at the bottom. I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe something along the length here. Like a, like a cross or whatever. Just, just something to create variation there. Or I could just weather the bottom of, the, of it with uh, some dirt, but I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea either, honestly. We'll think about it. That's it. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, though. It's been fun. It's been good to go back to painting some Reaper puppets. And uh, I'll be back uh, next uh, Wednesday. If you guys want to follow my own painting on my normal channels, you can check me out uh, on Twitch, because I have my own channel. Like, we've been painting... Uh, we painted a rice lane the other day from D&D. So we got a rice lane done. Also, if you want to learn from me, I have a Patreon where I paint minis. This is a... a what's it called? August. August. Paint job. That we're working on. So, yeah. All of the links are in the chat, thanks to Quintly. And I'll see you all next week. Okay, have a fantastic, uh, fantastic rest of uh, rest of week or Friday on my own stream. Have a good one. I'm waiting to be beam beamed out. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye bye.